Hey guys, Luke Tomich from the Epilepsy Institute. Uh, I want to talk about an interesting case that I saw recently. Um, I saw a patient uh, who was referred to me for replacement of vagus nerve stimulator, uh, vagus nerve generator um, for the battery was at the end of life and so they wanted me to replace it. And I always take a careful look at these patients because I think a lot of patients uh, who have vagus nerve uh, stimulator might be candidates actually for other surgeries that in some cases might be significantly better. Turns out that this patient had a polymicrogyria throughout the right hemisphere and she already has a significant left-sided hemiparesis. She walks with a significant limp, she has very limited grip in the left hand. And so in this case actually, you know, I uh, told the parents I would go ahead and replace the vagus nerve stimulator but I also told them that there's probably a much better option for this patient's epilepsy, and that's, that's a hemispherotomy. And, and again, in a situation like this, according to the hemispherotomy outcome prediction score, um, even a patient with polymicrogyria, these patients probably uh, uh, have a anywhere from 50 to 70% uh, seizure freedom rate with hemispherotomy, and so that's, obviously substantial. It's a much bigger surgery than a vagal, vagal nerve stimulator and the family needs to think about, uh, you know, if, if they wanna do that. But again, I think it's both interesting and important not to give up on these patients who are vagal nerve stimulator, uh, who have had implants, especially if they're still seizing. This patient, even with her vagus nerve stimulator, is still seizing daily. So again, there's a lot we could still do for a patient like that and it's important to uh, always look at these referrals uh, with fresh eyes.